I'm Spencer. I'm Eric. And I'm a monster. And this is The Itch. Welcome to our Itch podcast, episode two. Dos. Dos. The Itch podcast is where we all bring a topic to the table and we talk about it for 15 minutes. Minutes. Not hours, Justin. Minutes. We've talked about this before. God damn it. <laughs> I fucked it up again. <laughs> so we all bring it to the table. We talk about it. Sometimes we put it on... Uh, we're going to throw it up on our YouTube channel at The Itch Show. Is that it? Just check us out on The, the Itch. Itch on YouTube. YouTube. On YouTube. And you uh, we put it on iTunes. Hopefully soon. Even. Maybe. RSS feeds. They are, they are a bitch. <laughs> so, before we get started with all that... Justin, what games are you playing? Devil May Cry and Final Fantasy. 14? Playing, yes. I'm playing the re um special, special edition Devil May Cry 4 with all five characters and all that stuff. Having a ball. Having a ball. Doing a little bit of taunting. I'm going to beat up guys a little bit. I'm like, yo, come here, dog. In the game. And in reality. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, Final Fantasy. Excellent. Nice. Spencer, what are you playing? Man, what am I not playing? Nothing. What? Okay, so what I, what I, that doesn't answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm playing is Final Fantasy IX on the Vita. Okay. I'm playing a Professor Layton game. It's the one with the mask. I can't remember the exact title of it. On the 3DS. And also on the 3DS. Now, I'm going to get this wrong, but it's Shin Megami Tensei Devil Survivor. Uh, record breaker. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the name of it. It's, it's a tactics RPG. It's the Guinness the 3DS. Book of Records gotcha. version. So that's what I'm playing right now. Hopefully, I'll have a review of all of them somehow <laughs> at some point. What are you playing, dude? I this last week I haven't got to touch anything except for Fantasy Star Online Plus episodes one and two. Episode one of it. Uh, we actually sat down and played that together the other night, uh, and that's the only thing that I've gotten to, to get my hands on. I got League of Legends last night, actually. I got, oh, yeah, we got on there. got a, a match where I was like, what's this? What's that? How do I do this? What are you guys talking about? Well, my, my friend takes that game way too seriously, and I have to tone him down occasionally. Ah. He is... The games before that, before he got there, he was, like, raging hard. And he started to on this game that we played, and I was just like... How do you play with an erection? And uh, we, were, we were playing, and uh, he was starting to take it, he was starting to get annoying, and I was just like, dude, you're taking it too seriously, just relax. And then uh, I think we kind of calmed down and just played it, and we lost, but whatever. Oh, God, that was But it was brutal. a matchmaking, it wasn't us. It's yeah. never our fault. Yeah. Well, they had multiple level 30s, and we were all low levels, like, well. Yeah. I don't even know what level I am. Anyway, it's funny. Yeah. I know what level you're Oh. So, <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah. so we, we're bringing three topics to the table. It'll be out of order, but mine is, in case you're wondering, mine will be, if you, this were a video game, what would your power-up be? Justin's um, is. I, mine is essentially, what do you think is actually wrong with the gaming industry, uh, in your opinion? And if you could, what would you do to fix it? <laughs> and my question is, does purchasing used games hurt the video game industry? Okay. Should be a doozy. A doozy. Do you want me to set up the clock? No, oh, go ahead. Okay. Who wants to go first? I think uh, yours should probably go first. It's a little, it's a little fluffy, a little fun. <laughs> well, a little our, like ours gets a little like uh, <laughs> cereal. Gotcha. Get some Captain Crunch out there. All right, then let's begin. It's your nights. Oh my god. <laughs> it's your knees. Do not respond to any of those. Ready? Go. So again, my question to you guys is, if this were a video game, what would your power-up be? Justin, hit it. Stealth. Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> no, not power. Power-up, though. I mean, well, I mean... It's a, so, okay, so so in... in like in, Mario? In, yeah, like, like I'm thinking... Oh, so you want Nintendo power-ups? Like <laughs> well, you know, Mario had his mushrooms. Mega Sonic, Man. Sonic collected, yeah, a bunch of, Sonic collected a bunch of rings. Um, Mega Man has the little circles. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> uh, what would my power-up be? Because people right off the bat would go, oh, energy tank. Maybe I would say that for you. Oh, no. Because <laughs> uh, I want to do something from Crash. Energy I'd probably say Ooga Booga guy. 
That'd Ooga be sick. Booga? Because there's always voices in my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then the more I, I keep getting of him, he just gets louder and louder, and then eventually I'm just immune to the voices and the outside interference, and I do my own shit. It's me on the regular day. <laughs> I don't play around, right? My style's my own. Sucks don't know about me. Yeah, represent, fool. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mine would have to be in the vein of uh, the star from the star power up from Mario. Yeah. Or the uh, sparkly aura from Sonic. The dun 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 dun. Yeah. Because I constantly am singing that kind of shit in my head as I'm just walking around normally. <laughs> so the fact that I could run over anything and everything would just bounce off me and fly off and just be like dun, 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 <laughs> out of my way, bitches! Yeah. Uh, we are the proverbial bitches. Yeah. <laughs> I feel emasculated. <laughs> uh, I think my my power-up would probably be I don't know, it's hard to say like what, what I always eat or drink for a while there it would have been hummus what the fuck yeah i was running on hummus for a good month a while ago and oh. every single day at work i would go downstairs and or potatoes oh that hummus was crap though it's delicious it You're is crazy. crap because it comes in these little boxes and it has a, little, a pretzel on top and hummus on the bottom i love that stuff Ugh. i think it's good that hummus is crap oh what's good hummus then wait you're mexican sprouts <laughs> He's They're... probably closer to recognizing how this <laughs> you are. That's like me being like, oh, wow, I want some cheese and crackers. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wouldn't know about good cheese. Ooh, or another one that could be me is rum and coke. Could you imagine? Like, I'm running through the city doing whatever it is that in my horrible video game you do, and I like leg and turtle. Remember, oh, remember okay. Ninja Turtles? So I get, yeah, yeah. Remember Ninja yeah. Turtles? Pizza. Like, yeah, you find pizza like under the sewers. Yeah. Or something. Like, whoop! Oh, pizza! Yeah, I'll eat that. Or, uh, what was it Final Fight when you kick over the trash cans and there's just a turkey right there? Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you eat it. Like, yeah. what the hell? Come on, Spencer. Can't stop it. Come on. Okay, I've been known to eat things out of garbage cans before, but <laughs> that's but actually those were wrapped. Those grapes were wrapped. <laughs> okay, the very first time I met Spencer. I walk up, and, and we're at work, I walk up, and we're talking in this group, Yeah. and then someone goes, oh, I just threw something away, and then I hear, I see his head poke up, and I'm yeah. like, I'm like no, oh, so he's going to comment on the the process that we're talking about, and he's like, which, where are they? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, runs over and gets them, and I'm like, oh yeah, he's just making a fool, he's just making a joke, <laughs> and then I turn around, and I see him on his desk, like 15 minutes later, I'm like, wait, what? Is he eating those out of the... Uh, <laughs> and then we became friends. Yeah. I, we bonded over that. I don't need uh, trash cans, but hey. <laughs> Listen. Okay, so I understand the question now. Yeah. I can too. answer it a little better. Yeah. Um, I've been without my power-up for a little over a month. I hurt my back. My power-up is the gym. Oh. Yeah. So, like a dumb, so like in a game, the visual would be a dumbbell. <laughs> no. It would be the... Um, so in Dragon Ball Z... Anytime, okay, so uh, Vegeta did it and Goku did it, where anytime they got on a spaceship going to Namek or Vegeta when he had to train that little room right there. I'm just imagining that. It's 500 times, 1,000 times normal gravity, and I'm just sitting there <laughs> punching <laughs> over and over, and I'm like, I'm getting stronger. <laughs> this is clearly all I need. Like, do I, what? You know, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. So that's, yeah. that's how I feel, because usually I'll go into a gym and I. Uh, I'll first show up there and I'm like, oh, I need my pre-workout. Take my pre-workout. And then I'll go in there and I'm like, I'm feeling real good about myself. And I'm like, you know what? I'm really killing it. Leg day. Wait, then could your power up be pre-workout? Like the, the, the stuff? No. Because when you fight in the game, you're probably doing the workout. No, because when I get done with the gym, I feel amazing. Oh, that's, that's, when, that's the, when you go out there and freaking... So, it's like, yeah. a, so like in a game, he's, he'd be playing and running through the streets and stuff and there'd be a gym... And he'd be like, whoop, cutscene, and then him in the gym, and then yeah. he comes out all powered up, that and then runs would be off. an amazing but, game. <laughs> that is so self-aware in, inside, of himself. Inside cutscene, what song plays? Um, Final Countdown, probably. <laughs> the Tiger. Yeah. <laughs> like Something, like, everyone's gonna appreciate and, and enjoy and stuff like that. And then, yeah, when I walk out of there, like, I'll be, like, sparkly and stuff. Yeah, I'll yeah. Have, I'll have, like, a sweat buff. 
Where people <laughs> stay away from me because yeah. I'm too funky, and then I can get easier hits in. Enemies just slip off yeah. of you. Yeah. Yeah. They go to swing and they go, oh! Yeah. Wait a minute, and I'm like, God! With my freaking armpits and stuff. Yeah. And I freaking flap them, my, my junk. Yeah. Like, ah, you need to bathe. Yeah. So now that I understand the question a little bit better, uh, vagina. Oh, God. That's my power up. <laughs> How would you use that in a video game? <laughs> Throw it at people. You <laughs> grab it or. You'd, uh... Did you just do... <laughs> said grab it. Like five yeah, he's like, grab it. Yeah. Grab it. <laughs> <laughs> grab it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one of the stink on that one? Ugh. No, that's, that's this one. Oh, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. The, the shocker. shocker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the spocker, the shock... Or, wait, yeah. It's the shocker, the... Whoops. The spocker, and then the... Showstopper. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> that'd be a cool tutorial mission. Is that at the beginning? They're, they're like having you. Can like, you imagine that on the Connect? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> find find pussies to gain power ups. <laughs> just like um, you can you can dispose of pussy many different ways. You yeah. Can pussy. <laughs> you can use your fingers to get the pussy. Yeah. <laughs> or you can just be a dick about it. <laughs> like uh. What does this game do to me? <laughs> <laughs> I think also I I probably have to throw boobies in there oh uh, as a power up. So women are your game, huh? Yep. Wow. Wow. I think that, that mm-hmm. would actually probably women motivate me to do a lot of things that I normally wouldn't do. Yeah. Yeah. Or I, I couldn't do, and I gain super man strength to obtain. Like start a YouTube show, lift heavy cars, um, mm-hmm. work out with CT Fletcher. Yep. That kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, Workout in general. <laughs> Wait, hey, I guess another power for me, if we're talking that way, could be like alone time. <laughs> <laughs> you get like a dark cloud over you. Yeah, yeah. Like, push, push. <laughs> Reading a book. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. But uh, yeah, I think I think power ups, especially at work, would have to be something that would motivate me. Coffee for a lot of people, I think, maybe like women, would be it. Would be something. Yeah. Like at work. They're always, everybody drinks coffee in the morning uh-huh. when you get to these things. And it's like, I can't stand that shit. What? what? I can never drink coffee. What? I, I drink it very rarely. It makes, it makes me shit like <laughs> crazy. Well, it's a, yeah, it does that to everybody. <laughs> yeah, so, but, but I don't like the taste of it and I don't need it. I drink water all day and I've got enough energy to get me through it. But apparently people, people are very reliant upon uh, a lot of external caffeine sources and stuff but in all honesty hydration is because I guarantee you that every one of us are dehydrated I know I don't drink enough water in a day I drink too much water believe me with going to the gym and everything like that well not lately but I drink too much water you should see the water bottles I, I, <laughs> I have the, the 16 ounce ones that you get at like fries like right over there I'll drink like 7 of those dead serious and it's military that made me do that because everyone used to walk in with gallon waters and they would just drink a day that's crazy unhealthy because that's too much water. Yeah. You're like, oh, let's just keep going. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, when I, when I uh, was really focused on dropping weight, uh, I stopped coffee, I stopped energy drinks, I stopped soda, I stopped pretty much anything, any other kind of caffeine except for water. And I was drinking, uh, I'd, have a, I'd carry a gallon jug with me everywhere, and I would drink that and maybe another half of it, uh, one and a half of those a day. Um, and I, I would notice that my energy was it was way up there. And I wasn't even working out at the time. I was just eating right. Yeah. So my energy was a lot higher. So maybe power up would be H2O. Wanna, we wanna, <laughs> yeah, actually, not at work. Actually, well, that would be mine. We want to paint a picture for uh, people at home. Please. We're saying this and we're drinking. <laughs> we're drinking Monster and Red Bull. Yeah, right we have now. a Monster and Red Bull in front of us. Well, Spencer Spencer's has, not. Spencer has his tea, which probably doesn't have caffeine in it. Not now, but... No, I missed it today. I, I was running a little bit late and didn't want to show up late, so I just didn't even stop because that's that's my work ethic, you know. Oh my god! So his cutscene would be stopping <laughs> in the QT. We usually show up late. <laughs> Who cares? Spencer's but, cutscene would be jumping in a QT, and that would be his. Uh, yeah. That'd be his flag at the end of the Mario levels. Yeah. It'd be like going into a QT. Yeah. <laughs> Walk in there, you get shortchanged by the guy, and you're beating him up. For those, going those that don't know, maybe you're from uh, Canada or the other side of the country, but QT would be like our local quickie convenience store kind of thing. Like a gas station. But it's super nice. Yeah. It's a cute place. 
No. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you guys. It's a place for QTs. <laughs> Go. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why Spencer attends. So let me beg. That's right. Uh, <laughs> That's it. Place oh just God. for me. I feel like there's uh, too much electricity going on between the two of you. I think I need to get out from the middle of you. Oh. <laughs> it's just the chemistry. You know? Yeah. <laughs> just uh, bathe in our, uh, our chemistry. I, I am uh, <laughs> drowning in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys good to move on? Yeah. Yep. All right. Stop a little early on that. <clears throat> And so. I'm gonna reset the timer for 15 minutes. Ooh, Anything tricks. you want to talk about before we skip over to the next one? Which one are we doing? If you guys don't know, uh, this would be a great time for a commercial. This is the first official The Itch commercial. <laughs> we're, and we're, in this, we're saying, hey, be sure to check us out on twitch.tv backslash this is the itch. Go ahead and check us out on doesthisgamesuck.com slash the itch. And also on YouTube, look for the itch channel. We do new videos every week. Every week! week. <laughs> and we're an, back. That was an excellent, excellent commercial, excellent topics. Wow. Because I picked it, so of yeah. course it's going to be great. Wow. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't pick a bad one. <laughs> you know. Uh, so, uh, who wants to go next? <clears throat> I can. Oh, yeah. Let's rock, paper, scissors. All right. Scissors! <laughs> you guys have to scissor now. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Hold on. Rock, rock, paper, scissor. Papers! Oh, rock, paper, scissor. Ah, oh. Okay, two out of three. Yeah. That's, <laughs> no, no, we don't got time for no, that. No, two out of three. <laughs> All right, so... Wait, but what does that mean? That means he goes. <laughs> I get to pick okay. who goes next. Okay, guys, guys. All right, so my my topic... Oh, start um, timer. T- timer is start. Uh, my topic is... Um, what do you think is the biggest problem with the gaming industry? And this might be kind of like being a little anal about it, but... What do you think is the biggest problem, and if you can think of a way, or your opinion about a way to solve that problem? Go! Alright, so I I do have to say, since I did win Rock, Paper, Scissor, that I'm going to go last. You only get one pick! We did not not establish Rock, Paper, Scissor (laughs) dominant rule. Exactly! We did not, so (laughs) I just did that now, and going forward, there will be whatever (laughs) rules you guys want. But... On this topic, I am going to go last uh, because it does. My answer does bleed into my question. Okay. Well, Eric is the king of games, apparently. Fucking running Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, I will go first then. I would like to say first and foremost that I do not think that the gaming industry is in a bad spot. I just want to make that clear, from my opinion, compared to other industries, right? Just in general, I, I don't know other industries that well, uh, but I it's don't a think billion-dollar industry. Right I don't now, think it's right? in a particularly awful place. I think it's. I'm happy where it's generally gone. There's some things I'd, I'd prefer to be different, but in general, I think it's done really well for itself. It's eclipsed Hollywood easily. I think. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's doing great. That being said, if I were to pick something that I think is wrong, I think um, money versus progression, which progression is money in the long term. Mm. But I think that would be my biggest issue with the gaming industry. And we saw it last year pretty heavily. And this year we're finally seeing them fix it. So the solution's already there. It's just that I wish they were quicker about it. Basically, when you have the new console generation, my biggest issue is that I don't care about third party because third party can do whatever the hell they want. So Call of Duty still makes games for the Xbox 360 and uh, PS3. And that's whatever. I don't. I don't care about them. They're whatever. But first party games, like if Sony was gonna release a PS4, they need to make those games PS4 exclusives. I understand that if you release a game for the PS4 and the PS3, you're gonna make more money, and that's very short term thinking, because it, all it does is enable the consumer to say, well, then why do I need a PS4 if it just came out for the PS3? And this game was clearly made with PS3 hardware in mind. Mm-hmm. So why would I even bother doing a graphical upgrade? Yeah. Like, no. Invest in your products. Go for the long-term profit. Don't go for the short-term, bigger profit margin, because in the end, it's going to pay off better for you. And I think both consoles have suffered for it. Uh, because really, we were talking about this. We were walking through uh, GameStop. Mm-hmm. We talked about walking through GameStop, and it's like, what is there to buy for the PS3? Oh, there's a shit ton of games. Holy crap, this library is huge. What is there for the PS4? I think there's like one shelf dedicated to the PS4 yeah, and it's like one whole display. It's but. like two rows. <laughs> and then there's like a bunch of used games under it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's like two rows, a bunch of accessories underneath that, some uh, PlayStation network cards and then used games from the for the bottom three shelves. I would venture to say 
that there is a decent sized fraction on that PS3 shelf that was released when the PS4 was out. Mm -hmm. And it's like, could you imagine if the PS4 had that chunk? Granted, I understand, again, I understand there's profits involved, they gotta please stock, shareholders, all that stuff. Yeah. But if they would just invest more in the in what they're trying to do and just put their eggs in that basket, I think I think they'd be so much better off. And I'm tired of seeing that, and I'm glad that right now we're kind of pulling away from that. Yeah, Des Destiny it, needs to cut that tie. I think really that, push. That's a very good point. Destiny is actually probably suffering a lot from it. Yeah. Um, because the the worlds are just too large for a PS3 or Xbox 360 to run right now. So PS4 and Xbox One have to have that small of a world, or as big of a world as PS3 can have yeah. X and Xbox 360. Mm -hmm. um, that is a very interesting point. I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo, where, where Nintendo would fall into this, I, I'm not quite sure, because they're... Nintendo rests on the world quite a bit. We, we've talked about that a lot. So it's hard necessarily to say, like, oh, pull away. Granted, they did... Their Wii U is backwards compatible, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is something that... Even Xbox recently announcing they were going to do that... They're probably not going to be anywhere close to the Wii U's backwards compatibility. Um, so Nintendo has a little bit of a different strategy when all that gets involved, but they do go full force on their new consoles all the time. Granted, their third-party support really isn't there, so I, I don't know. There's not a whole lot to say on that one. But I'm, when I'm talking about this, I'm really meaning the main two, PS4 and uh, Xbox. Yeah, because I think Nintendo takes a step forward, but I just wish someone gave them more of a step. Like, they had a father figure telling them, alright, you can do it, you know? Yeah. So they can actually advance <laughs> and not do something stupid like Metroid. Mm. <laughs> Name drop. Anyway. Yeah, um, so that's mine. Okay. Have you guys read the most recent articles on that? Their oh, response? Oh, I, I sent I sent. Is that you? Guys. Okay, yeah. okay. I was, oof. Sometimes I can never remember where I get this information from. <laughs> right. I just know I've read it. Um, so you want me to go? Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, my big issue, and I was... I was thinking this up actually uh, partly yesterday, and I thought about it. I was like, oh man, it really sucks with the gaming industry, right? And I'm not going to tell you what my first topic is because I'll discuss that one later. Or the first thing that popped in my head because I'll discuss that one later. Uh, but what I really came to the conclusion was, was and it kind of ties in with yours a little bit, is oversaturation. So what we get a lot nowadays are a lot of the same concepts behind titles with slight changes. And I know, like, Eric and myself will occasionally mention stuff like Nintendo, but a lot of the rest of the world is guilty of it as well. If you mention things like shooters, for instance. A lot of shooters have a ADS button. A lot of shooters have a sprint button. A lot of shooters have a melee button. It's the same concept, generally. Back in the day, if you're playing Goldeneye, you had to switch to a weapon <laughs> to melee someone, did you not? I the don't know. Karate chop? Yeah, I think, I think it was its own. Well, I mean, it was a disarming thing, yeah. wasn't that? Yeah. It was kind of cool, but... Um, but now we're in a day and age where all that stuff is mainstream. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the control schemes, right down the control schemes, are the same or similar. And um, with you know certain games like Halo being like really off the wall different. Um, <clears throat> and then you can go to stuff like Western RPGs, where a lot of Western RPGs take that approach of it's your own story, you do it how you want type thing, which is great. You like to have that level of experience, but it's the same archetype. At the end yeah. of the day, it still falls under the same thing. Okay, you're some dude, you could be good or bad. Oh, cool. Thanks, KOTOR and Dragon Age and Mass Effect. EA, sure, but I mean, that even. Don't put don't... KOTOR under EA. <laughs> you kill, you, I will Regardless, rip your jugular out. There's a lot of. Um, the chemistry just changed. There's, there's a lot of. So working now. Hey, you guys heard it here first. <laughs> um, regardless, there's a lot of uh, that stuff that's like really similar. People don't try and push the, the boundaries. Some titles do, I won't lie, but look at how many shoes that re were released in this last year alone. Look at how many third-person games were released, and you see why a lot of people prefer, or are like, third-person games are really selling. Um, freaking, a good example, uh, third-person games with an open world. So you have Witcher, which is an RPG, but third-person. You have Batman, which I would assume sold well. Just uh, it's of the too RPG. early, but I'm sure it did. Yeah. I don't see why it was. Um, and then you have uh, newcomers, like Shadow of Mordor. Which, general concept is just you're running around killing all these guys. It wasn't the Nemesis system or all that stuff that was really big sellers. It was just the fact that at the end of the day, it's different and it sold well because of its difference between um, a shooter or a. I mean, granted, Destiny sold well too, but amazingly well. So but, you're saying that that the what's wrong with the industry is the fact that they cookie cutter too much stuff? Yeah, there's a uh, formula. 
and a lot of times people will staple that formula onto everything, and it's not working anymore. I think like I'm fully aware of it. Like I have one shooter, which is Battlefield, and it's fun to me. All right, cool. But I'm not gonna go. Oh, I'm gonna play Battlefield, and then I'm gonna go get like Destiny and play the multiplayer on that. Cause it, I'm fine with one shooter. I'm fine with one RPG. I'm fine with you know all this stuff because there's so many games nowadays that copy off of each other. You're playing some. You're. It's like kissing one girl, but tasting another girl inside of her mouth. Is that if that Kitty makes any, oh god, <laughs> if that makes any sense? It's just it's a taste of something. I can else. imagine it's, how that works. Eric, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. Eric, you're gross. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. And, and or intriguing. I uh, love you, Eric. Intriguingly gross. <laughs> <laughs> but, but regardless, I just think at the end of the day, just to summarize, it's just the fact that a lot of people don't push the boundaries and go, all right, hey, we've got a different, you know, an idea that's going on here. You see it more in the indie market, sure. You see it in like Japanese games, they'll have some weird stuff going on. Like, look at Catherine, for instance. Hmm. That game's off the wall. Yeah. yeah. But res- uh, respectively, so it deserves to be for what it what it's done and stuff like that. So I, I would say people just need to try different things. You know, stereotypical. Oh, AAA titles need to be more creative. And blah blah blah. <laughs> that's pretty much all I got. Gotcha. No, and I can agree because I actually uh, one of the things that I ran into this last week, my brother and I both actually said the same thing. And mind you, my brother and I have very different play styles in video games. We find different things fun. You guys are actually polar opposites from what I've gathered. Yeah. Like, you're all about community and, like, being online. And he's, like, loves a single-player 50-hour RPG. Yeah. (laughs) He's actually... so, And it's actually funny because he used to not be like that. I used to be like that. And I used to play, like, all these RPGs and put in tons and tons of hours. But he lacked the patience Mm -hmm. to grind out and get through some of these harder parts. He then switched his gears, and now he understands and appreciates the patience of it. Yeah. Because he has the time to do it to where now I don't have the time to put in 50 hours into a single video game, and it's really hard for me, so I'm looking more for the social aspect and playing with people and stuff. Gotcha. Um, but he is still social with his friends and stuff, but like how we approach the game is different. But on the PlayStation Store this week, they uh, released Drive Club for free for PlayStation Plus members. Yeah, wait, really? Yeah. Oh, so I should probably get that, huh? Yeah. Right. Uh, I don't like it. Like, I think the cars handle that crap. But it's a racing game. Him and I were talking yesterday, and we're like, you know what? I actually have every genre of video game that I care to have right now. Like, between the two of us, we, we share games back and forth. We have a platformer, which is Knack. Uh, we have uh, Destiny as a shooter. We have Drive Club now as a racing game, and then we have uh, um, Dragon Ball Z for a fighter. And those cover each of the different genres. Yeah, there's probably better games of these, but we still at least are touching each uh, each genre. And like you said, the cookie cutter thing where most of them follow generally the same concept, it's just a matter of what skins do you want on top of it. Yeah, played one, you played them all. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I actually had a hard time uh, when I picked up Battlefield. I didn't think it was a horrible game. Mm-hmm. I just had, like, it made me want to go play Destiny because I've already invested so much into that shooter. Yeah. It made me want to go play that instead of starting over with uh, with uh, Battlefield. And the same thing with uh, Final Fantasy XIV. Mm-hmm. It felt just like another MMO to me, and I have invested so much time in a WoW already. Every time I load up Final Fantasy XIV, I think about playing WoW. Because I already have so much invested in it. And granted, I'm close to 50 in this. Mm-hmm. I'm close to the end game content, so... Um, but yeah, I, I guess uh, I should probably answer this question now and then uh, bleed it over into the next 15-minute segment of my question. What I think is wrong with the video game industry, I agree that it, it's a very profitable... Uh, it's very profitable. Lots of money is moving around. There's lots of stuff going on with. You can see it. You're getting a little more visibility on the funding right now because of Kickstarter. You're starting to see more talks of money, which back in the day you didn't talk about it. Like yeah. it wasn't advertised how much a video game cost to make and stuff. But nowadays it's it's right up to the forefront. Like it's one of the first stats you hear about a video game. 
um, you hear what console it's for, how much it's going to cost to make, and then what are the uh, specs and requirements and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> so for me, it's successful. The industry is great. I think there are definitely some areas that need improvement, and I think one of them would actually create a huge wave. And this might not be a popular opinion, but I think used video gaming needs to go away. I agree with Microsoft's DDR, DRM. DDR? DDR. <laughs> DDR. They're, they're DRM. They're, they're pay for to load up used games. And the reason, I'm, I said that flat out, but give me a second here. Let me explain. The reason that I believe that is because I believe that the developers are being shortchanged. If you really care about a, an IP, such as, uh, we'll say, uh, give me a single title RP, Dishonored. If you really like Dishonored, then you would buy it and pay for it, right? So you want money to go back to the developers so that they then don't have to put up a Kickstarter to try and get funding. They can show by sales of the game and the profit of the game that they should make a second one. Well, that's also why you see um, like definitive editions or re-releases a lot, because they're essentially forced to double dip in some areas. You see that with, I mean, granted, sure, Last of Us, for instance, definitive edition or collectors or whatever they called it, um, they re-released it. The remastered. Remastered, thank you, is just coming on to a new platform. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, it's on PS4. But then you have something like Dishonored Definitive Edition, which is coming onto a new platform, but it's also because it's it wasn't as successful as something as Last of Us, or didn't have as much hype behind it, yeah. that they're essentially double dipping. Because it's it's the same game with a few more things. It's it's a package deal, but at the same time it is also them going, Cool. Uh, you gotta yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's also them going, oh, cool, I can go ahead and freaking double dip again, make some more money off this, off the same product at the end of the day. Yeah. So, so with, uh, for me, I think that the developers need to receive that extra cash so that they can then continue funding and building, continue to build their empire, their franchise, turn that IP into a franchise. Instead of selling a game as a franchise, and that's how they have to pitch it to get money, they build an IP... Everyone buys it, developer gets paid, publisher gets paid, they get their full $60 charge, and honestly, I think part of the reason why games are 60 bucks is partly because of the cost, uh, the, the, the money that they're losing from selling used copies, because at that point, places like GameStop, you purchase the game from them, 60 bucks, all right, publisher and developer get paid. Then you return it to GameStop, and someone else buys that same copy. Publisher and developer don't get paid anymore. GameStop gets all profit. Uh, so we're on the next topic, right? So is that essentially what's going on? My question, how I said that it would bleed over. My question is, is how do you feel that uh, used games are impacting the industry, and do you feel it's negative or positive? All right, right. Uh, you want my, mine? Or? Yeah, go ahead. I don't think it's a negative. I think used games are fine. I think if you look back at the school ground effect of of anything movies, toys, any of that. One kid has always just given his other stuff to his friends. Given it, sold it for jacks or mm -hmm. for blowjobs. Trading. Depending on how old they are. It's a bartering system. Like six plus. But, I mean, you just, they're, yeah, they're, they're always doing that and that's how games get around and that's okay. I think that's fine. And granted, the used game market is huge. Way bigger and way more accessible than it's ever been. But, at the very, at the same time, Games today focus so much on DLC and stuff like that that it's you kind of they're always really encouraging you to at least have the original copy and to really those definitive editions and stuff helps them and they might not actually buy the game if it weren't for it being super cheap or if it weren't like that and that's a great way to get people into these franchises so. I honestly don't think that the used game stuff is hurting it too much. I think GameStop itself has some problems that I would <laughs> like uh, ironed out as far as uh, helping them out. But in general, I don't know if used games is really a huge issue to me, personally. I've, so I agree that yes, on the playground, you would trade your games with your friends and stuff. But at that point, with how much multiplayer is pushed now, 
if you, if I let you borrow this game because you and you end up liking it, mm -hmm. and you're like, man, we should play this, and I go, okay, give me my copy back, and I'll go buy your own. Mm -hmm. It's then feeding money back into the developer and publisher, and they now have sales to make a second one, Twisted Metal right. Five, Eight, whatever. What Twisted Metal? Because yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about Playground Days. Like I borrowed Twisted Metal from one of my friends. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and it's I happening, up... Justin. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> starter. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, like so. Yes, I agree that there's a bartering system. There always will be. But an, an entire business model based off of taking used copies and then reselling them, that's what Craigslist is for. The only difference is that Craigslist doesn't offer a guarantee that the CDs or discs or whatever you purchase will actually work. Um, but GameStop, their entire business model is almost all used game. Mm -hmm. um, and you see Best Buy and Walmart and stuff like that moving into the used market into the used game market I really think I understand that from a consumer the I want to say it's DRM am I am I wrong yeah DRM. digital rights it's, media yeah. digital rights media okay I, I don't think it's wrong for the developer and publisher to want to get paid for their game for every copy that gets sold or every person that plays their game mm -hmm. I don't think that that's bad I do understand why the consumer doesn't like that because it's more money out of their pocket and it, depending on the cost of it, it could be excessive. Because at that point, if I'm paying for DRM, I should just have to pay. I should just have to pay. I don't know, like fifteen bucks or something like that, or like ten bucks to unlock it, so that I have the full thing. But then, if you also add in the cost of purchasing the game from GameStop, that starts getting into. I almost paid for the full game. Mm -hmm. I almost paid for the the brand new game. You're talking about online passes. Basically, yeah, and I, I know that they've tried it and stuff, but I think how you were saying like how to fix this stuff um, and earlier in your comment of how what's wrong with the industry and how to fix it, I think that the used game market is too large, it's too accessible, um, and it's it just takes money out of the developer's pocket in the long run. But and on, if the on, developer doesn't get paid, how does he make the next game? He starts a Kickstarter. But here's the thought: well, instead of Instead of punishing the player, because having them pay $5 for it is essentially punished, if you think about it. How? What Punish the player. $5 for what? To, to, to get to unlock the game okay. that they have used. Right. So, okay, in, instead on. of that, what if they rewarded people that bought the original game? So, like, like uh, here's, activation here's some, codes for here's like some, DLC. Yeah, here's some DLC that, we like, kind of like The Witcher 3 did, but um, I just think maybe a little better um, where where you just say here's some DLC that we made for people if you just opened it here's the here's the code have fun with the DLC and then if you if you get it used you don't get it I mean I know that's small but they could probably evolve that into something more they do that already but a yeah, lot of people actually do that yeah yeah already. things like that w would, would help and, and then you wouldn't have to and maybe people would be more encouraged to kind of do that. so let's get Justin's take on this and then we can talk about solutions a little more because I, I definitely like where you're going with that um at the end of the day, it's bad for the industry. It's and in, in, from a perspective of the consumer, it makes sense to be able to buy something used. Like at the end of the day, why can't I just have that game instead? DRM is something that's really scary uh, when you consider what it entails, um, especially the fact of like, okay, I bought the game, no one else can touch it. A, a quick fix to that would be like, okay, I bought the game. I get like borrow passes just off the top, right? And yeah. I can give you a code and they can be like, yeah, you can borrow it. And then you get that code and the game's unlocked on your console. So all you have to do is just buy it. Or not buy it. Uh, you can play my copy of it. Something like silly. But <clears throat> that would be my like go around about it. But uh, when, when you think about it, GameStop is too big. And there are a lot of similarities and differences when people compare, you know, like. Um, like, what's a good example? Like, movies. And they'll be like, oh, well, movies used works fine. Not really. Because there's more than one avenue that people make money from movies. And I saw this on about two different YouTube videos that I was listening to on the way here, uh, where people actually demonstrated that it's because it's a different form, uh, a medium of entertainment, you have to get your money differently. We're, we have a lot of money up front, is essentially how we work with DLC. Um, and I know you mentioned um, don't have all this DLC, or whatever. But it's I think it's the uh, the conundrum of you guys ever seen that picture of the snake eating its own tail, uh -huh. where you don't know where it started, 
really, but it's just happening. And it's it's an infinite thing. And it's essentially, what that means is, video games are forced, in my opinion, I could be wrong, that uh, they're forced to make DLC because to make up for their used games, the sales that they lose out on their used games. It could be the other way around that they're just trying to make more money or whatever, but I could definitely see that if used games weren't a thing, there would prop maybe, this is just speculation, more um, diversity where people were trying would try new things. Or people would be like, I mean, all game companies make a lot of money, so who knows, maybe be run by a bunch of just meatheads upstairs. But there's also that thing where people could be open to, to making new ideas or creating new games because they have money to fall back on or they're not spending a thousand dollars or it's not such a big risk because games nowadays are such a huge risk to get even a stakeholder and to be like oh hey come on guys you guys are gonna like this game it's a game where if you die you start from the beginning you're gonna love it no <laughs> you know <laughs> like stuff like that yeah so we can all agree that it takes money out of the developer's pocket right absolutely so as as video game enthusiasts well, I would say can, that we are can we maybe revise that how? It doesn't necessarily take money out of their pocket. It just doesn't put money into it. They never see it. Because it might not have been a person that would have bought the game. But then again, it is the same product being used over and over. So there's that too. Right, but they, they might not have been a purchaser. What do you mean? So Joe Blow off the street just bought a used game for 30 bucks. It was normally 60 bucks. Fired it. You gave it to his friend. No, no. Well, no. He, he bought it used. Okay. Um, so the publisher got nothing. Yada, yada. Developer got nothing. But would he have bought the game for sixty dollars when it was being sold by the developer or publisher? Maybe not. No. Maybe he wouldn't have bought it. Yeah, but I mean. So, so are they losing the math involved in that? Would be interesting. But are people waiting just to buy the used version or the new version? I will. Yeah. So, so I will get, say there's that, a lot of different variables. Uh, as we do a lot of our reviews, we do tell people like, hey, this game, I wouldn't pick it up for anything more than forty dollars. Yeah. So we are, we are encouraging them to find sales, not necessarily used, but we're telling them to f wait till you can find a copy, used or new, for uh, this price or lower. Right. Um, now, basically, so yeah, we'll revise that and say that it's it's potential money that the developer is not receiving. Um, so some of the the solutions for that to kind of find a way to to get away from used copies. Uh, but then still provide the consumer with everything that they gain from getting used copies. I've got an amazing solution when you're ready. Okay. Uh, right, go, ahead. go ahead. Going through a couple of mine, I think that every video game should have a demo that you can get on digitally. Like, even if it's just the first level, the intro of the game, you don't even have to create anything special for it. Just let me play the first level and then stop. Let me play... 30 minutes of your content, however you deem is a level, let me play up to that, and if that catches me, and then I can then order it or whatever. I could have sworn that was a feature that Sony and Microsoft were talking about at E3 before both their consoles got released. Yeah, and it's, it's just not all-inclusive. That'd be funny, that'd be like funny it, if they did the demo for the order, and the only thing they took they didn't put in there was the credits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, there is that potential. But, I mean, at that point, you just say that this is a level. Like, yeah. I know that, like, I mean, I'd probably purchase a lot more indie games um, from developers that I don't know anything about and can't find uh, enough reason to purchase right off the bat. When a gameplay video doesn't do enough? Yeah, well, not even that, but, like, when I'm just playing around on the store looking for something, if I see a title that interests me and I click on it and it has, like, two screenshots, I if the title interests me, the description interests me, I would just want to install a demo and try it out. Yeah. But if you don't offer me that, then I'm going to move on and I'm going to forget about your title and just go look for the next one that has a demo. Mm -hmm. um, so if you guys offer me demos, you're potentially, you're giving me, you're giving me that, that, carrot on a stick to go then purchase your game full price because if i really liked it or if i had fun with it uh and some may argue that a, a one level is not going to be enough to make you go purchase 60 bucks but it's better than what it is now um another thing that i i think that they could be doing to help kind of curb the that is digital sales um digital sales obviously are cheaper for them they don't they just have to stock the game online they don't have to create packaging they don't have to create contracts with Best Buy, Walmart, and all the distribution of, of the actual hard copy. 
uh, taking uh, shelf space, warehouse space, uh, paying people to actually make all the stuff, the artwork that goes on the boxes and all that stuff, front and back, the all of that CD art, all that cost is gone. And you put it online digitally, and it, yeah, right now I guarantee there are people who want physical and physical copies, but give it cheaper to the people who want it digitally because that was going to be my solution. Oh, is it? Is, is release digital? Have the digital version. Um, mm-hmm. One, be cheaper, and two, just have some kind of DLC packed into it where you're encouraged to get a thing you can't return. Yeah, but if it's cheaper, then it's you know. That's what um, it works. This happened with uh, Don't Make Cry. Yeah, uh, I believe it's only. I could be wrong, but as far as I remember, because they sold it for twenty five bucks, which is, I mean, two thousand eight was when the game came out. Yeah, two thousand eight, and they they spruced it up and added a few different skins on it. No, actual different characters, not even skins. These guys play completely different. Oh, do so okay. it feels like a new game in the, <clears throat> in that cell. I mean, they don't have like special cutscenes or besides yeah. the intro, but, but twenty five bucks point, and it's only digital. Yeah, they put it on there twenty five bucks. You you wouldn't expect them to put something on there at a loss. So obviously that twenty five dollars is still Profit, benef- yeah. still profitable. So how much cheaper would video games get if we just went straight digital, or if we encouraged digital to be eighty percent of the consumer? And I understand that people right now purchase physical copies so that they can then return them when they're done with them mm-hmm. to get to basically take a cheaper so that their next game is a little bit cheaper. Um, it, it just kind of reduces what, like ten, twenty bucks. Like, like when you buy a game new and then you trade it in, you game, get like GameStop has a weird policy. If you're actually if you actually have like a GameStop card with them, um, and you bought the game or if the game was released within a month. And you turn it back in, it's like forty or something like that, or thirty-five. Wow! And that's like the max. But sometimes they'll have uh, deals, which are the only times that it's good to actually actual good times. It's actually good to turn in games where they'll be like, "Oh, turn in two used games, get back like sixty bu- uh, bucks on credit." It's the only time. Yeah. So you could turn in just crap. You could turn <laughs> in freaking ride to hell, and they'll be like, "Oh, great!" You know, <laughs> they don't care. Yeah. So the. The other part to it that uh, I was looking at is I kind of compared it to uh, the music industry, uh, and especially the, the movie industry is now following the music industry. So it started off with the music industry saying, here's physical copies, buy this, and people are like, well, I like parts of it, but not the whole thing. I just want to pick and get little bits of it, so I'm going to borrow it from somebody. Then it turned into uh, Napster. Where people were just downloading and stealing and pirating it all. I don't know anything about Napster. Bear share? Never done. LimeWire? No. Nothing. I bought all my my, my music. <clears throat> yeah. Right. So then <laughs> Johnny Law uh, coming out so of me. <laughs> if you look at the video game industry, Steam is very similar to Napster. It offers a lot of free content that you can just go on there and take. It's not pirating, but it's free content. So people are consuming free stuff. So that's potential sales that you're losing for other games that are very similar. Then um, you also run into, so for using as the music industry, then you run into streaming services where people are trying to say, hey, subscribe to our service, our Napster service, our Spotify, our Pandora, our Google Play Music. Pay us a subscription fee and you'll have unlimited access to this content. But we know that we're getting money out of you because you were just getting shit for free. Movies are now doing the same thing where people were going to the movies, going to rentals at Blockbuster and whatnot, then going into um, Redbox. Oh, to, wait, well, in, in, in order, Redbox, piracy Redbox. was next where people were just downloading all their movies and burning them. Oh, yeah. And then they went and they started a streaming service called Netflix. And they found, and, and Redbox is supposed to be getting, I thought I read something about they're doing digital as well. Uh, uh, yeah, I believe so. They're going to do some kind of digital service. Now you go into the video game industry. Video game industry is following that same path. It was selling copies. People didn't like it. They started doing just straight up demos. They started just borrowing, getting used copies from people. Then they uh, started running into pirate issues where people were hacking their gaming systems. So I wouldn't know anything about that. So that they were hacking. Then you have ROMs and emulators. Region locking? <laughs> That's the only thing I swear by. <laughs> yeah, so you have the ROMs and emulators of people just grabbing all this free content. Um, and then you have the paid services like Gamefly and PlayStation Now, where they're trying to provide you a streaming service of just play through our games, get our content and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think that that streaming service is... Music, obviously, has kind of stopped evolving. It's sitting at the streaming services right now because they just 
throw a shit ton of ads on top of stuff. Uh, Hulu Plus and uh, Netflix. If Hulu Plus, if you don't subscribe, they just swamp you with ads, but you can still watch some stuff free. You pay for it. We subscribe. We we're subscribed to it, and we still get ads. Yeah, really? we still get ads. Yeah, yeah. I was, okay, I was well, watching Hulu, last bad week. on you. <laughs> but uh, Netflix you, is the only one that. Then you look at uh, the PlayStation Now service. PlayStation Now is a fantastic, very futuristic. Gamefly and Amazon just recently partnered up to do the same thing. The problem is, though, is that the games that are available on there, uh, obviously, video games cost sixty bucks, and movie cost twenty bucks. So at that point, if you're charging me fifteen bucks a month to rent a movie, what should you be charging me a month to rent video games unlimitedly? Should it be the cost of a movie, the cost of a game? It's like sixty a month. Sixty bucks a month, and you can play any game you want unlimitedly. I don't think that, that that's actually a solution. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, that's some ideas. Yeah, like, where do you put that price tag at? But I definitely think that getting video gaming over to live streaming will be a solution for the used game industry. Cool. As well as digital sales. Exactly. I think digital sales is probably closer to than live streaming. You probably have to balance it out, though. Because then you'd have to be like, oh, which, you pay for the whole streaming service, but hey, I'm always playing Street Fighter, for instance. Mm-hmm. Does Capcom get more of their money now? Do, uh, can they do it better than, say, Spotify, who screws over a lot of their uh, artists? Artists, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah that gets a, that's a whole other thing. that I actually wouldn't mind doing a full thing on that. Um, we're going music, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, like a full thing on video game streaming, like full researched uh, everything about video game streaming. Be fun because I think it's actually, I think it's necessary, and I've dabbled in almost all of the potential services at this point. All right, well that's it for the Itch Podcast, episode two. This one was a little uh, more opinionated, less less fluffy and fun than our last one. Yeah. I have well, to say, we do still want to hear your guys' takes on all three topics. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so we'll be posting it on on YouTube every Friday. So check us out on Fridays. Every for free it. die. Every free day. Uh, and it'll be on iTunes hopefully shortly. Yeah. Cool. Working on that. <laughs> All right. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check us out on This Is The Itch on Twitch. Uh, we're also on DoesThisGameSuck.com. Just find us on there. We're, we're called The Itch. <laughs> New slash. It's spelled uh, A-W-E-S-O-M-E-S-T-U-F-F. G U Y S Spencer A N D Yeah, we did new videos every week. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. B I N E A P P L 